Jesus bless you, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I love you guys. I just hope Jesus is filling your cup full of peace and joy and fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Um, forgive me if I sound funny. I have not been feeling well all week. And um, um, my job also, I start at different hours. So I've been incorporating all that in with it. And just had a lot going on lately. But you know what? That's okay. Because because God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to come up here and encourage you and show you some revelation that the Lord had shown me as I was reading scripture. And, you know, we can read scripture all the time. But until you get that aha, that revelation from the Lord, it, it's 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 different. It's just when you get that revelation from Jesus, it's so amazing. Amen. And it's, it's something so neat that we can overlook until the spirit of the Lord just shows you. And it's so beautiful, my, my brothers and sisters. So I just wanted to come up here and encourage you and show you some revelations and, um, and, and, and tell you what, uh, what he opened my eyes to. And you know, this is going to be about John the Baptist. Amen. And, um, I believe that's in, um, uh, Matthew chapter 11, right? And see, but through scripture, we can read about, you know, some of John's life and, and we know, we all know who he is. We know he was such a powerful man of God and, you know, the role that he had to play and, you know, and we can even see this when he was in uh, his mother, Elizabeth's womb, you know, he leaped for joy when Mary was standing there, right? With Jesus in her belly. Amen. And then we see all through his life, you know, that, he was the voice in the wilderness, the one crying out, make way of the Lord, you know, make way of the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one that comes to take the sins away, you know, hallelujah. And he even baptized Jesus, right? He saw the heavens open up and the dove descend down and the, he heard the voice of God, right? Right. But what else do we see in this? This is what the Lord showed me, but he's yet just a man. John the Baptist and all these women and men in here, they are just in the flesh like we are, my brothers and sisters. And it shows that nobody is perfect. It shows, okay, that we stumble. It shows that we're in the flesh and we're human. But in all this, what it shows is the heart of our Father, the love of our Father. So, you know, so when the enemy comes to attack, he does it when we're at our lowest, right? He does it when we are at our lowest and he, he, because of the circumstances that we're going through, the, the trials and tribulations we go, we're going through, the enemy comes along, right? And, and he distills in, you know, fear and worry and anxiety and doubt. Amen. And that's when the enemy wants to come and just spew lies into us. But right. We don't walk by feelings. We, our faith comes by knowing, Right. Hallelujah. That's what means to walk in faith. Okay. Cause the enemy always wants us to walk in our feelings, but I wanted to encourage you and show you this great man of God, how he was just a man. And we can see this when he was going through the fire, right? When he was going through his situation, when he was imprisoned and we can only imagine what John the Baptist was feeling at that time while he was in prison. What a beautiful, wonderful man of God. I mean, he even got martyred, you know, he got beheaded for our Lord and Savior. But you know what Jesus showed me? In the, in, in the midst of all that, he showed me where John the Baptist is and he's walking with our Lord and Savior. Okay, but if we go back and see the state and the mind that, that John was in, we can only imagine what he was thinking and feeling, right? And, and we can see where there was doubt. And how we can see this seed of doubt that, that was in him is he sent, while he was in jail, his disciples to go question Jesus, right? He sent to confirm, you know, that Jesus was who he says he is. Amen. After everything that John the Baptist's life was all about and what he's seen and what, you know, what he personally uh, saw with his eyes and, and what he did for the Lord in that moment of distress and despair, what did he do? What did he do? He went and sent disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one. Amen. And what did Jesus do? What was the heart of our father, brothers and sisters? The heart of our father wasn't to condemn John the Baptist. Uh, the heart of the father didn't say, you know, you're no, no, no longer worthy to be my son. You know, the heart of the father didn't say, get away from me. I don't love you. No, no, not at all. God, the heart of the father said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So see my brothers and sisters, no matter what we're going through in life, 
We put our trust in the Lord. It doesn't matter what we're going through, okay? We can always trust in Jesus because he never leaves us or forsakes us. So believe that. Okay, believe that. You know, some of us are dealing with our marriage. Some of us are dealing with a divorce. Some of us are dealing with our unsaved family members. Some of us are dealing with financial needs. And some of us are dealing with our jobs, you know. But in the midst of your storm, what does Jesus say? I will never leave you nor forsake you, my brothers and sisters. Okay, so when you're feeling like you're in despair and all hope is lost and God has forsaken you. No, did he forsake John the Baptist? No. Another revelation Jesus showed me is when, G when Jesus got persecuted, what did, the, what did the disciples do, my brothers and sisters? They ran, they scattered, they ran because they were full of fear. Okay, and when Jesus died and he resurrected three days later, what is one of the first things he said? He said, go get my brothers. Go get my brothers. Why? Because that's the thought. That's the heart of our Abba Father. He never leaves us or forsakes us. See, Jesus doesn't leave us when we're at our high and everything's good. Okay, he's with us. He doesn't leave us when we're at our low of the low and we're struggling. He doesn't leave us. See, he says a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up, right? Amen. So we get back up even when it doesn't feel so good, guys. I know that our circumstances can hinder us from, from being in the word. Our circumstances, when they're not so good, can hinder us from worshiping and giving praise to God, okay? Our circumstances, when they're not so good, you know, can uh, uh, hinder us from praying, but in the midst of all that, our King Jesus will, is still by your side. He never leaves us or forsakes us. Amen. So what am I trying to say, my brothers and sisters? Never give up. Don't throw in the towel. When your circumstances are not so good right now, don't let the enemy shut you up or shut you down. Okay? It's normal to feel that anxiety. It's, it, you know, that's when the enemy is going to come and attack you is when we're down. But you know what? We go by what God's promises are, the heart of the father. Amen. And the heart of the father is this. He loves you. He loves you in your mess. He loves you when we're feeling low or when we're feeling high. It doesn't matter what circumstances are going on. Jesus never leaves our side. Amen. We just got to walk in that faith. We just got to push through, persevere through. When the fiery darts are coming in your mind and the enemy's telling you otherwise, rebuke it and cast it out and know and stand on what God promises are so hallelujah it was just so beautiful my brothers and sisters when he opened my eyes to this with john the baptist and he opened my eyes with when he was being uh you know killed and how the disciples ran amen isn't that beautiful that is the heart of our father so keep going saints don't give up because even when we're not faithful god is faithful even when we're not faithful jesus is faithful never forget that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. See, when we mess up and we stumble, what do we do? We cry out to the Father and we ask the Father to forgive us because he is faithful to forgive when we confess our sins and we repent. Amen. I just wanted to come up on here and encourage you all. The revelation was so beautiful when he opened my eyes to it. It was like, wow. So see, my brothers and sisters, they were just men and women in the flesh too. Nobody is perfect. But the thing is, is we don't give up. We don't give in. We don't stop. We don't shut down. We, we push through and we believe in Jesus and what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just hope this encourages you today. Go in and read the scripture. It really does edify us. It really is spiritual manna. Get in your word. And you know what? Don't fall for the guilt, shame, and condemnation when you're struggling. Because that's not a spirit. That's not fruits of the spirit of God. Okay, but rotten fruit from the enemy. Amen. So keep going, saints. No matter how you feel, push through. Because God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. How beautiful is that? You can see this with Doubting Thomas. And you can see this with the story of Samson too. Amen. Oh, it was so beautiful when Jesus opened my eyes to this. And that is the heart of my father. Our father in heaven, his heart is for you. 
and not against you. Amen. Get back up, saints. Somebody out here needed to hear this because the Father has put this on my heart to share it. It is the most beautiful thing when the Lord gives you revelation. How many times have we read about John the Baptist and that didn't sink in? Amen. I'm so happy Jesus showed me. And now I'm sharing it with you. You are so loved by God and you are so valuable. Never forget that. Never forget that. Keep going, saints. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he has his eyes on you. Hallelujah. Until next time, stay blessed in Jesus. And I love you all so much, my brothers and sisters. Bye now.